what we have here is this incredible process where bacteria and fungi are growing on the exudates at the root tip. There's just, we're starting out at the, the first root that comes out of the seed. They did this with tomato seedlings, but it's been proven to be with all root tips and all growing roots on all plants. But this growing root tip of a, of a seedling before it forms root hairs, it's gonna put out exudates and those exudates are gonna feed bacteria and fungi that can promote there and then go in. And when these bacteria and fungi go in, they're bombarded with superoxide, which is a reactive oxygen. And it, it actually destroys their cell walls. They blow up like balloons into protoplasts, and then they start draining electrolytes and many of them die and are completely consumed by the plant root. All the nutrients absorbed. So, and remember bacteria, and we'll talk about more about this, but bacteria are, are considered the black boxes. So they don't release their nutrition. That's why we need protozoa. That was Elaine Ingham's point. But here with healthy living roots, the bacteria's nutrient load is, is, is given directly to the plant by the plant itself with no other interaction of any other member of the soil food web. So this is a primary and very simple, powerful modality that all plants have that it, it, it's the predecessor that was hijacked by mycorrhizal fungi to form the root associations that mycorrhizal fungi endo and ecto have, you know? And so this, this is fundamental. All plants do this. And, and by allowing things in, this is how endophytes get in. This is how mycorrhizal associations begin. But this is also how pathogens can get in. Now, continuing onward, these microbes are bombarded. The ones that are not destroyed by this process, that are affected by this process and lose, and lose a lot of their, their liquids, they regenerate in the root hairs. And, and all these microbes are releasing ethylene. And that's a stress hormone, no doubt, but it's also a growth hormone. And in situ in this situation, what it's doing is promoting root hair growth. In fact, without microbes, root hair growth is impossible. Let that sink in. So they're releasing ethylene, it's promoting the root hair growth. And as they're traveling up and down, circulating in the root hairs, they are regrowing and their, their, their cell walls and they eventually get squeezed back out of the root hair and, and then repopulate and regrow and reproduce in the exudates released at the tip of the root hair. So this process has another layer, but I'm going to start here and, and, and just highlight this. And then we'll go to the next layer because you're like, what about endophytes, right? We'll get to that. These bacteria and fungi for the most part are digested by the root, but the ones that are not digested are regrown, restored, repopulated through root hairs and at root hair tips. Some of them are destroyed, some of them are drained, but some of them are endophytes. When rhizophagy interacts with endophytes, something interesting happens. They're releasing ethylene and the plants are sending them in response carbon. Okay, and so they're feeding these microbes but they're also bombarding them with superoxide, just like all the other microbes. And so these microbes must be able to provide nitric oxide. This nitric oxide, they create through nitrogen fixation. So when we talk about nitrogen fixers being endophytes, this is why, because they die 
<laughs> if they weren't able to produce nitric oxide to counteract the superoxide. So this is an incredible process. We, we can see this happening. They don't go all the way into the cell. This is a picture right here of a root cell. And these endophytes, they actually live between the root cell cytoplasm and the root cell wall. And they actually get shuffled and cycled and shifted around as they're bombarded. But it's this constant dance and interplay and exchange that keeps them alive and feeds the plant. And, and it actually stimulates the plant's growth of root hairs, but also growth in general. And because it's growth in general, these are plant growth promoting endophytes. It's, it's truly incredible. We'll talk about some of these individuals in the course, but we're still learning. We're still discovering. There's so much to learn. And, and so many of these microbes we were already studying in the laboratory for various reasons. And only now did we discover their benefits, how they're ubiquitous, how they're amazing, which begs the question, what other ones are there that we don't have in a laboratory that we can't culture in a lab very easily because many things can't be cultured in a lab very easily. So, so, so it really, this, this all really opens up doors because, you know, ethylene is root hair growth, even though ethylene is a stress hormone. You want to control those ethylene levels. They have to be at the right amount, at the right time. And if they're, they're the ones directing it, these microbes and the plant, they can modulate and control that. So no microbes equals no root hair growth. This is very intense. They actually proved this. They did experiments. Well, you'll see it in the video, provide nitric oxide or die. And that's a direct quote from Dr. James F. White. So th th this is the thing. Those endophytes that are in your plants, they are nitrogen fixers. Why? Because they wouldn't be there otherwise. So all endophytes entering through the roots must be able to fix nitrogen. And from what I've read and what I've heard um, in the phylosphere and the leaves, it's the same way. All the ones that I've heard about are nitrogen fixers. This triggers gravitropic response in roots, directs them down to seek the more reduced, more acidic soil. It triggers root hair elongation. It increases root branching and increases root and shoot elongation. So this is, this is really important. It doesn't say lateral root branching. We'll get into that later, but you could, you could bring that on into this situation, but just looking at this and thinking about this for a perspective for a second, we realize that compost tea where it's liquid forms of microbes that are passing through a micron filter that are not mycorrhizal. They're fungi and bacteria that are small. This is the reason why it's so powerful to water compost tea in at the growing root edge of trees and plants because it, it, it feeds the rhizophagy cycle. Compost tea is for rhizophagy and, and it's wild because, you know, Elaine didn't discover it. A mycologist discovered it and he was replicating work that discovered it in Australia. So, um, and it's because of the stains of mycology. Mycologists always use stains and, and, and the, well, there's a lot to that. There's a lot to that. Biology has very specific stains. They'll actually like for malaria, they'll have a specific stain and literally they'll be able to, to look at the percentage of cells and see if you you're lit up with enough and you're like, you have malaria, you don't have malaria, you know, just by visualizing it. So stains are incredibly useful, but you have to understand what the stains are highlighting, what the highlighting means and what the ratios mean and how to count them. So because of that, um, we, we, we didn't understand this in conjunction with the soil food web until now. And what's so cool is Dr. Elaine Ingham was all over this in practice with compost tea well before this was even discovered. I think that's super cool. So, so this is something that, um, is brand new 
and it's completely new information and in fact the endo reaction with the rise of phagy process that's like two months old so nowhere online in a course or anywhere in, in the literature other than published in his uh, journal article are you going to see that information so w w what's so incredible about that is that we know who these microbes are in the em consortium so you could be using em and promoting this cycle knowingly feeding into this i know i have been and seen incredible results uh, even in gardens that you know haven't been watered for like a month in the heat of summer everything's dying you're spraying em on there watering it in and you're seeing plants that were completely wilted leaves crisping completely have a re full recovery it's it's absolutely incredible